Ah, the Focusrite console, based off of the legendary ISA-110 preamp designed by Rupert Neve for Sir George Martin himself. It's big and open and has a lot of punch, so that makes it perfect for VO. So let's do the thing and get it set up. You're listening to The Dangerous Mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. No excuses, no BS, no pants. So I picked up the Focusrite console recently. And honestly, I didn't have that many expectations for it because it was part of a free download from the SoundWide Brainworks merger. And as I dug into it, I started to realize this thing is great for VO. It's got an amazing set of Sonics for voiceover. So I set it up for a gig on Friday, and it sounded great. And the client loved it, and I was like really happy with it. So using my Neumann BCM-104, these are the settings that I used on my gig. So I want to show it to you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down, and I'm going to set the channel strip up from scratch. So as you see here, you have uh, four different settings for each uh, preset, A, B, C, and D. So if I go to B, that's a default reset setting. Here I am back to my sound. So let's go to B and, and start with a, com a complete scratch. All right, so let's add some gain here. All right, now you can hear me. All right, so really, I know that a lot of people think that you should not go into the red with digital, but this is a modeled analog uh, piece, uh, a component. Uh, running in the digital realm. So you have to treat it like analog. So I kind of like it when my voice hits into this red. I don't want to go up here. I don't want to trigger the overload. But I like it right here for my personal taste. All right, so right here, V gain. This is noise. All right, so take this down to off. This only exists to add a little bit of that analog character. I don't know why you'd put it in there. Maybe for, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. All right, total harmonic distortion. So you can set your total harmonic distortion to off, or you can crank it up all the way. You don't want to crank it up all the way. Just leave it where it was default set, right about there. You can actually roll it back a little bit, just kind of maybe right at noon, right? We don't want it too, we don't want it completely clean. We don't want it completely dirty. The focus right sound, to me, to my ear, is like a, um, it's like taking that SSL sound without the, glossy top end that I don't really like. And there are a lot of aggressive, um, there's a lot of aggressive tonality you can get out of an SSL when you drive it that makes it a little ugly. Some people don't like. All right, so right here, let's start with the, uh, the gate. Let's get rid of this noise. What you're hearing is the uh, ventilation in my booth. So this microphone is so sensitive, it sounds, it sounds a lot louder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kill that with an expander, not the gate, use the expander. We're gonna, we want our noise attenuation. With a gate, it goes from top down, it opens and then goes to, and then comes back up, right? With an expander, it starts from the bottom up. It's a lot more natural for, for vocals, especially uh, dialogue. So we're gonna use the expander. And we're gonna dial in the threshold. And you see down here, here's the gate indicator, expander gate indicator. So we wanna just use your ears and dial in just enough so you, so you hear just a little bit of noise. Don't completely kill the noise with the threshold. We're going to kill it with the range. So this is how many dB of uh, basically uh, reduction you're going to get when the expander opens. We don't want to go all the way to 80, but right about here. So here the noise is gone pretty much. So that, that feels good. That feels natural. All right, so we're not going to use fast attack because a slower attack is a little bit more, more natural sounding. You may have to use fast attack if you're, you're in a noisy environment, but sometimes with fast attack, you, also get, you can also get a clicking artifact, the sound of the gate opening and closing. So I prefer to leave that on a slow attack. Here we have hold, which basically holds how long the expander gate will stay open once it is triggered. Um, we actually want to set this to the, to the lowest setting possible. All right. Release. It's probably pretty good here. You don't want it too much. You don't want it to, to sound like, uh, you don't want to hear the noise at the end of whatever you're saying. But I can bring this up a little bit. I can bring this up to about a second. Pretty good. All right. So there we go. Let's move on to compressor. So really for VO, 
you know, you don't really want to use a lot of compression at all. You want to just use a, a kiss, a tiny touch of compression. That way it helps your, uh, basically, you know, you're going to get, if you don't have a compressed signal, there's a good chance at the beginning of every sentence. If you look at your waveform, the first, uh, the first consonant that you speak at the beginning of any sentence is going to have a larger waveform spike. Right. And that is not necessarily great for whoever's mixing or conforming your audio. So what you want to do is you want to just kind of hit this a little bit. So I'm going to look at the compressor, compressor, compression <laughs> indicator, the compressor indicator. And we're going to compressor the crap out of it. No. So what we want is we just want this little bottom light here to come on every so often, especially if I raise my voice a little bit. So it's good. I like that right there. But we want to set our ratio to 2.0 to 1. 2 to 1, 1 and a half to 1. 2 to 1 is good. Release and attack, just leave there. We're not going to add any makeup gain because we're not doing heavy compression at all. We're going to leave the mix at 100%. We don't want to, we could, we could actually, you could actually dial it back a little bit. So it could have like, you know, a different blend of direct signal and compressed signal through your compressor, <laughs> through the compressor. And, uh, but leave it 100%. So here we have our gate and we have our compressor all set up. Now let's do the de -esser. So what we want to do is set the de -esser. So here in the focus right, to the right is an exciter. Now for VO, you never want to use the exciter. So do not, do not rotate this over here, right? If you rotate this over here, you're a bad VO person. Bad, bad VO person. So we want to use de -esser. And the way we set which frequency we are targeting is using this little listen uh, circuitry over here, which when I initiate this, you hear the part, the frequency that is being attacked by the de -esser. So that is what the de is going after. I know it's hard to listen to. So, all right, so this next part might be a little bit hard on your, uh, you might want to turn the volume down a little bit. So, because I'm going to show you how to, how to find your, your harshest uh, frequency to DS. And the way you do that is you actually just make the sound. So just hit the and you can almost you can almost hear a little bit of whistle when I do that. Right? So when I do this, click this on. So right there is the worst of it. So right there, that is what's being attacked by my DSer. So now let us. So the sensitivity, so we just want to hit a little bit, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. It's better to under DS than over DS, so you don't sound like Cindy Brady. So here we go. So we got our DSer set up. I like that. Very simple. Very simple. All right. Let's, oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. So let's go down here to these filters. Now, these filters basically uh, go into your dynamics. They're part of your dynamics section over here. So what you want to do is this, you can use these to set what filters uh, go into your, the side chain basically of your dynamic section. And you can pick which part of the dynamic section it affects or if it just goes into the audio, uh, basically the audio circuit into the main feed. So. We don't need to do any low pass filtering of the high end. So just click this. You can see the different things it uh, affects. Click it to off. This basically, this peak filter right here, we're not going to use that. Click it to off. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to affect the high pass going into both the compressor and gate so that low end rumble does not trigger our compressor or gate. We just want to make sure that the compressor and gate is being triggered by our voice. So first things first, set this, click this until it says compressor and gate. Okay, both of those lights are lit up. So what we do here will affect the signal going into the compressor and gate. So we really want to kind of attenuate anything really below 70, 80, depending on your environment. Uh, you know, leave it at 80. So... There you go. You can even go higher, but generally this is pretty good to keep out any sort of rumble from triggering your dynamics. Okay, so now we're all set with the dynamic section. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here. All right, this is your regular filter going into your audio, 
high pass, low pass. This just generally goes into the straight uh, audio circuit. So we do, again, we don't need to low pass. And right now I'm not gonna use the high pass filter. Normally I would probably high pass to about 50, but the Neumann BCM-104 has a built-in filter at 50 Hertz. So I don't really need to use the high pass at all. But you know, you may, you may wanna use this to help your signal to cut out some of the rumble. But what I've noticed with this low pass filter is it does get a little squonky about, uh, up here. So use this uh, judiciously, all right? So now let's get to the EQ. EQ is simple. I know a lot of times people look at EQ and they're like, what do I do here? All right, I'm gonna tell you the philosophy I use for EQ. What I generally want is I want a little bit more clarity. Now, I know people say don't put EQ on a VO, but sometimes you have to EQ at the source to make up for the way your uh, microphone sounds in your environment. So in my booth, I know that really, there's not really a lot of buildup of frequency in here that, that screws stuff up because I've, I've really done a, you know, I've, I worked really hard to squash that. But what I want is I want a little bit more clarity. So what we're gonna do here is um, we're gonna break this up. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna add a little boom. I'm gonna to go to 100, and since I don't have 100, since these, I can't pick the exact frequency, I'm gonna pick 95. I'm just gonna add a little boom right there. Right, couple dB and 95. Then I'm gonna to go to the high frequency up here. And I'm gonna set this for 15, because 15 is really about where a lot of condenser mics roll off. So I'm just going to add a little bit of up here, a little bit of high-end detail, right? You may not even he really hear a difference yet. So we're going to go to high mid frequency. And we want to set this for about 2.5K. At least I do. So 2.5K, again, right in my presence peak, just adding a little bit more. Right? Hear that? Now, we can leave the Q setting here pretty much there, right? Now, here's, this is an interesting one. This is the low mid frequency right here. You're gonna use this to get rid of any, like that low mid mud that may, uh, you know, harsh up your, harsh your mellow, that may actually make your voiceover a little bit uh, uh, congested sounding in the low mids. Now, normally with a U87 type mic, I would really dial this in somewhere probably about 500. Now see here you have the ability to change the frequency sweep with this times three. So instead of going from 120, from 40 to 420, you go to 120 to 1200. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna find the most offending frequency in the low mids, because this is really going to be for most people, the part of the frequency uh, range in your voice that will uh, be the, the thing that has to be um, addressed more so than anything else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. We're going to bingo this all the way up, right? And then we're gonna sweep this until we find really where the squonkiest worst part of it is. So just go like this. La 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 so just talking, you hear how, you hear how squonky that is? So we're just going to dial that back a hair right there. Cleaner. So this is it with the EQ on, and this is it with the EQ off. So EQ off, EQ on. It sounds a little bit more, um, it sounds a little bit more natural, actually, with this EQ. So there you go. This is really the key one right here. And just, you just basically um, dial up your, you're basically the amount of gain all the way. Sweep the frequency until you find something that is resonant and awful. <laughs> and then just dial it back a little bit. So you're going to add, add, add for clarity up here. This is going to be a little bit of boom. And this is going to take out the squonk. And there you go. That's how you set up the focus, right, for VO. Now here, I'm going to compare it to see what I did with A. So here's A and here's B. They're pretty close. So on A, I have the range all the way up. So, yeah. Oh, you know why? <laughs> they were putting, they're doing concrete work next door. So I, I may have had to uh, 
I think I had to punch that in, in a little bit of fast attack too. So there you go. So you can get a lot of great sounds out of the Focusrite for VO. I really, really, really recommend this channel strip. And it sounds, I think, uh, fantastic with the Neumann BCM 104 with this transformerless microphone. So let me know what you think. What do you think of the Focusrite console for voiceover? Leave something in the comments. All right, until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, fading to black.